And Phil joins me now. It is surprising to see all the damage in the city this many months later. Yes, it was really surprising. You think the majority of this damage would have been done a half a year ago, but it's still in Peru, uh, right by the downtown area. A lot of it is still underwater, and a lot of these towns are still seeing the ongoing effect of these flooding six months later. This water just won't go away. A lot of it has to do with the levee breaking and the water is just stuck there. 8,000 acres of farmable land still underwater. Just awful. You've done many stories now just focused on Peru, Nebraska. What made you mm -hmm. want to focus on this community? Yeah, so the reason we decided to do Peru was we got a tip from the senator, Julie Slama. Mm -hmm. She tweeted out pictures talking about how upset she was that people aren't talking about Peru. And we realized that Peru is a microcosm for the bigger picture going on with these towns in southeastern Nebraska, that a lot of these towns are still facing issues every day. But at the same time, this town's also fascinating because it's home to Peru State College, a state university, and that adds an extra dynamic to the situation because this isn't just a town of 800. This is a town with about 2,500 college students and 175 employees working there as well. To do these stories, you spent some time there, you talked to the people there. What were some of the biggest takeaways you took from someone covering this now for several days? I'd say the resiliency of this town is uh, easy to see. Everybody's really working hard to get through this. They all work together and they were very opening up their arms and their communities to let us come in and tell their stories, which we're really appreciative of. But also this flooding is not going away anytime soon. There's a lot of work to do. They need a new water treatment facility still that could cost up $3 million. They got to get rid of all this water. They have to fix the levee. So still a lot more for to be done in Peru. Yeah, a lot more to do. What What is next is they work to move forward. Yeah, so the, as we're seeing the pictures of this water mm -hmm. treatment facility is the first thing that they're going to really have to take care of. A new one, as I said, costs $3 million. That's going to be the big thing. They have a temporary one, but that only lasts for about three years, and they're going to need to find the money for that. And they just need to rebuild and let people know they need to help out their economy. A lot of people in Missouri still can't cross the 136 bridge from the Brown uh, by Brownville and Rockport, Missouri to get there. So only people in Nebraska and Kansas can really visit the area easily. So they're really urging people to come into Peru, check out the stores and really help boost the economy in Namaha County. All right, Phil, a lot of interesting information, as you said, just a microcosm of what people mm -hmm. are dealing with. And there are a lot of people in different places that exactly. are dealing with the effects of the flooding. Yes. Thanks, Phil.